something is terribly wrong here. Do you know what it is? It's the rhythm. A rhythm can make or break a piece of music. This is a beautiful piece of music, Lagerma. You mess the rhythm up and it all of a sudden just becomes jarbled and ugly. And it's that way with every single piece. It doesn't matter how clean the notes are. It doesn't matter how many notes we get right. If the rhythm is off, the piece is wrong. The music's wrong. Rhythm is the foundational thing in music. We can get everything right except the rhythm and it will still sound, even to a child, wrong. If the foot don't tap right, then we all know it's just not right. So how do we develop that good sense of rhythm so that then if we want to slow down, we want to speed up, we want to play with the rhythm, we can do that and it still works, but it still sounds right to anybody who hears it. And one of the ways we can do that is in our practice is to work with, do you know what the tool is? The metronome. The metronome is an amazing device and you can get one on your phone. They're very easy to find, but not so easy to get started with. And they derail a lot of people and a lot of people don't like their metronomes, but it's because they're probably just not using it right and not doing the right work with them. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to get started with a metronome, how to set up your metronome, how to use your metronome, what to actually do with it so that you get better internal rhythm, that internal pulse to where everything you play is just right in there. But before we dive into the metronome, let me introduce myself. I'm Alan Matthews from Classical Guitar Shed. And if you'd like to download a free book of pieces, it's 30 pieces, easy-ish level, not completely easy, but not completely hard. You've got tabs, notation, fingerings, everything you need. You can look at the description below and find the link down there. All right, let's dive into the metronome. So, First things first, what is a metronome? A metronome is a clicker. It's just a device that clicks in a steady, reliable beat. That is all it is. It just clicks. And you can get them to do a whole lot of more fancy things, but ultimately, at the root, a metronome is a clicker. It just clicks. And so why would you use this? We use this to develop our internal sense of pulse and our internal rhythm so that when we're playing music, we can keep it on the beat and we don't get distracted by the physical demands of playing a piece and all this and slow down and speed up depending on how easy it is to play those particular notes. Instead, we can actually play at a steady tempo, speed, and make the music sound right. So that's what a metronome is. There are certain ways of practicing it and certain ways of setting it up that'll make it easier for you. And that's what we're getting into now. So first off, where do you get a metronome? The easiest place to get a metronome is just go to your app store, Android or iOS or whatever you like, and just get a metronome app. There is really no difference between them. A lot of them have different bells and whistles, but ultimately they all click. They're all gonna do the same thing and they'll all work. The one I use is Pro Metronome, but it's not because I've vetted them and, and looked at a whole bunch of ones and chose this one. It's because 10 or 12 years ago, this happens to be the one that I just jumped on there and got, and it's been working ever since. And so it really doesn't matter which one you get if you just get one. Now there's also mechanical ones. So this is the one that you can sit in your practice space and they're absolutely beautiful and they have the arm that goes back and forth. You might have seen these on a piano teacher's piano or something as a, as a child. This is the beautiful mechanical wooden oftentimes metronome. You also have different types of individual devices as well that you can get and put on your music stand or clip to the top of your guitar, things like this. But the easiest to get is going to be the app on your phone. So that's where I would start. They're typically free or you can get some advanced version for a couple of a couple of bucks, but you probably won't even need to, to spend the two bucks. You can just get a free one. Well, so now that you know why to use a metronome to develop good rhythm so that you can play music and you know where to get one and how to get one on a phone, then what do you actually do? The first thing you need to do is to set it up because oftentimes whenever you, you get one, you'll have something, it'll sound something like this. There's a high note and a low note. Bing, boom, boom, bing, boom. There's something like this going on. This is called an accent. And so it might make sense to say, if I'm playing a piece of music in three, four time, then I need it to, the accent to beep on the first beat. And that way I always know where the beginning of the measure is in my music and all this. You don't need any of that. 
the first thing to do is to turn all of that off and just to have a straight click. And so however your particular device does this, figure it out to turn that off to where all you have is just a straight click. This is gonna be the easiest and most useful and less distracting way to use it. Because that way, any note, any click can be the beginning of the measure. And if you mess up and need to start back over, you don't have to wait for it to come back around or try to stay with it. It's best to just, in my opinion, to just leave it as a straight click and no accents. Even Steven across the board, the mechanical ones, do this. I guess some of the mechanical ones might have a little bell or something, but the that would be a very fancy antique more than likely. So just a straight click. You may also be tempted to put in a subdivision and a subdivision is just smaller notes. So if we have a click on a quarter note, then a smaller one would be the eighth note or the triplet, something like this. So now instead of just dink, 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 you're filling in all these other little notes. It's just distracting, don't do it. You can use it for a specific thing, but normally you wanna turn all of that off again and just have a straight click. Simple. Okay, now that we've got a metronome, we've got it all set up, so now we wanna use it. What do we actually do with it? Whenever you first start with the metronome, here's what's going to happen is you're gonna put it on and you're gonna put it down and you're gonna start playing and then you're just gonna start paying attention to your playing and then all of a sudden you'll realize that there is this click going on but it has nothing to do with what you're playing. And you'll say, oh, that's, that's annoying. Okay, that's because you're not doing it right. So the way that you do this to start with is to put down your guitar and spend a moment with your metronome. Turn it on and listen to it. This is our click and just listen to the click. So now your entire attention is just listening to the click. That's the first step. It sounds ridiculous, but that is actually the first step. You just listen directly to the metronome. Now your brain is wired to ignore the metronome because we're wired to ignore any sort of pattern. So if, we, if there is a steady pattern, our brain says, okay, got it, and then it just can delegate that energy, that brain energy to something else that's more important. So we have to override that and actually pay attention to this steady click, which we are hardwired to ignore. <laughs> so that is the challenge of working with the metronome. So listening is a challenge in itself. Step two is to clap along with it. Now you're still listening. You're not listening to your clap. You're listening to the metronome. So listen to the metronome and clap along and just practice right in there. And that practice in itself is amazing. You, do, you just do that and you will play with better time. You will develop your sense of, of rhythm without even a guitar. This is also something you can do when you're traveling or playing hooky at work or doing whatever it is that you're doing. You can just put on your metronome and clap along with it. And it is great music practice. Step three, is to vocalize along with it. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this. The first one, I would just say use a ta or something like that. You can also clap ta, 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 ta. And you're still listening to the metronome. Your ear is really seeking that out as if it has the golden secret that will just open up your entire life. Ta, ta, ta. If you have something else, don't use la because it's too round, but something articulate, ta, ta. Tit, anything like that. Next, you could actually count. Count to three or four. One, two, three, four, one. Now, as you're doing this, keep the words short. Don't say one, two, three, four, because it's actually all over the beat. Instead, don't, don't, don't. We want that, that little spike of sound so that you're actually bringing it from your insides through your throat. And because you truly do not know it, unless you can do this. You're, you're really not on that beat unless you can actually bring this forth from your air and from your person. So it's a great step. Step three is to vocalize with the metronome. If you need to go out behind the, the back shed, you know, go out to the woodshed to do this, then so you can get away from other people because you're embarrassed to be using your mouth if you're not talking to somebody, do whatever you have to do to do it. You might be tempted to just do it silently like this. That doesn't count. <laughs> it, does, it doesn't count because really you can kind of fake it in that way. If you actually say something, there's no faking it. All right, so that's step three. Step four is now with the guitar. And so now we can play along. You can just use a thumb note. 
and just play along. Again, you're still listening to the metronome. Index finger, middle finger. So that's the next step, is just to play. Eventually then you can add in the left hand, and once you're first starting with the left hand with the metronome, it might be helpful to play more than one note on each one so that you don't get distracted by moving note to note, like this. So maybe three notes on each. So that way, your left hand is moving slower. It's not, you don't have to worry about synchronizing the hands so much and doing all of the technical aspects of scale playing along with using the metronome. Instead, you can just focus on playing with the metronome as the main challenge, as opposed to physical challenges as well. So from there, then you can put it into your scale practice, your exercises, your hammer-ons and pull-offs are great for using a metronome, any sort of technique work that you do on the guitar, which is work to build your hands. So you're not playing a piece of music, you're actually practicing patterns, scales, training your hands to work well on the guitar. Anything in that camp, the metronome is wonderful for. That way you can bring your internal rhythm to the music you play. You don't need to play with the metronome whenever you're practicing your pieces, unless you need to. So at first, to, to get with it and to, to get everything locked in on a piece of music, it's great to go through the metronome once or twice. But as a rule, you don't wanna always practice your pieces with the metronome because you wanna play it with internal rhythm and you wanna put your attention on the metronome when you're playing with the metronome. And when you're playing a piece of music, you wanna actually put your attention on playing the piece of music. So instead, make the habit of always practicing your technique work with the metronome and then using it as a tool when needed for your pieces of music. Okay, couple of notes. This will be uncomfortable at first because it's different. If you're not good at the skill of playing with a metronome already, which no one is when they first start, then chances are it will be a little bit uncomfortable. And that's okay. Expect it to be weird. Expect it to be just strange and perhaps annoying or something because you won't be getting it. If, you're, if you find yourself off or your mind wandering, it's perfectly normal. So instead of getting discouraged, know that this does get easier with time. And if you're if you find yourself practicing and the metronome's going and you find yourself annoyed with it, then that means that you're not listening to the metronome. Because if you're annoyed, that means that you're doing something else and it's just over here clacking away on the side. That means that you're not listening to it. So then just stop, go back to these steps. So listen, clap along, vocalize along, then start playing along and use the metronome as a tool. And whenever you're using the tool, it's about using the tool and training the skill. All right, hope you have enjoyed this. If you look in the description below, you can find a book of free sheet music. There are some great pieces in there, very charismatic and fun to play. And they've got notation and tabs so that you can just jump right into them very easily depending on your current reading music ability or not or anything, you can still play them. And there's also listen links so you can listen to the pieces to see which ones you'd like to play. Enjoy getting started with the metronome. Good luck and just keep using it, keep showing up. Even just a couple minutes a day is fine. All right, have fun. Bye-bye.